Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the BH Virtual Event Space. Today, we're talking photographic workflow, how to deliver images in record time with a man who knows a lot about delivering images in record time, Mr. Jeff Cable. Jeff, welcome back. How are you? Good. And don't say good afternoon. It's still morning here. It, yeah, it's afternoon for me, morning for you. <laughs> it, it could be, you know what? I'll just say good day. There Is that you fair? Go. Good day. Good day to everybody, because maybe maybe someone's watching in the UK, and I think it's like 8, 8 or 9 p.m. over there. So good day, everybody. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> want to say thank you to our hosts for this event, ProGrade. Thank you very much to them for hosting this. Uh, as usual, if you do have any questions for Jeff throughout the presentation, please feel free to get them in. Jeff is more than happy to take them as he's talking about things, so don't hesitate. Uh, you can use the Q&A tab on Zoom. That's the easy way here on Zoom. Otherwise, if you're joining us on Vimeo or our Facebook pages, you can go ahead and use the comment section. But otherwise, I'm going to kick it over to Jeff so he could dive in and just say thanks for being here again. Yeah, no, I'm excited about uh, being here. It's funny because we did a workflow uh, video, you know, probably, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, and things have changed just a bit. So it's good that we had a chance to do an updated uh, version here. So let me share my screen and um, I'm going to just share my whole desktop here. And I'm going to start with just a couple slides and then um, what I want to do, if it'll go, there it goes. Um, and then I'm going to jump into actually doing a demo of how I do my workflow. Um, so first of all, like Scott said, I, I just want to thank ProGrade Digital. Um, uh, many of you know I was in the memory card business for many, 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 many years. I'm very picky about the memory cards and the card readers I use and very happy to be using ProGrade Digital because they are... I think the best in the industry. So um, moving forward, let's talk about why speed matters. Um, and it's interesting, a lot of people, uh, they know that I shoot for the US Olympic team. So they think that that my workflow is all about the Olympics. It isn't. Uh, my workflow, uh, I want to make it, uh, obviously it's important to meet deadlines. My Olympic deadlines are 15 minutes after I get done shooting. So when I'm shooting an event uh, for Team USA, I might shoot uh, in uh, Tokyo. I think I was averaging like 2,700 images per water polo game. I had to go through those 2,700 images in 15 minutes, find the best 10, re retouch them, resize them, and get them back to the US. So speed does matter in that respect, but it's not just Olympics. I want to be efficient um, for all the reasons that you see listed here. I do want to save time. Um, uh, lately, especially my time has been very short. You should see my house. It's just a disaster because I'm at home. I was in, uh, doing a, a photo tour in Vietnam and then Cambodia came home for a couple of days. I went to Costa Rica and then came home a couple of days. And then, uh, I just finished shooting a large three day, uh, bat mitzvah for one of my clients. So I literally have been in my own bed for probably, I think three or four nights in the last six weeks. So time is really important. And um, I want to be able to deliver those images as, as fast as I can uh, to clients uh, so that they're happy, but also I want to save time so I have a real life as, as well. So um, I want to save money and time is money. So I want to uh, be as efficient as I can. So I have an income coming in, but also, um, again, have a life. I want to differentiate. One of the things I, I hear a lot when I do... Um, I'll go to trade shows or talk to other uh, photo industry people. They say, you know, you really should deliver images within six weeks of the wedding. And I'm thinking to myself, like, six weeks is crazy. I want to be delivering within six hours. And um, so I like to differentiate from all of my competition by delivering images the next day. So almost without fail, unless I'm flying somewhere the next morning, um, I will have images delivered. So the I did this three-day bat mitzvah this weekend. I shot a total of, I think it was uh, 5,500 images over three days. Um, and that was done uh, Sunday. Uh, I was home by 1 p.m. Sunday. They did brunch Sunday morning. And I had everything delivered yesterday. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I had it delivered Sunday night uh, at 11.30 p.m. So I went through all those images, and I'll show you how I did it. I called them. Uh, re retouched, actually retouched, I think 45 images for them. So I did all this that night and delivered. And that really sets me apart from my competition. Um, people love the fact that they can get their images quickly. Um, one of the things I like to do when I'm shooting an event, uh, whether it's for the Olympic team who needs images for social media, but also for my clients, what I don't want is them to, 
you have their event and then let's say if it's a bar mitzvah and they're doing it in the morning and so the service is from 10 30 to 12 30 a little bit of a lunch and there's a break i don't want them posting images from their iphone and saying like you know uh, joey did such a great job no i i want them to have really high quality images to post so i immediately get them some images for social media of course it's got my watermark on it so that they have a better image to show but it also promotes me because it has my watermark um, i want happier customers and of course you know, that's the key to this business. It's not just shooting well, it's, you know, having customers and clients that, that like working with you that are happy. And um, I haven't advertised now in I think seven years. So all of my business is word of mouth. Um, so having those customers happy and telling their friends, and of course, I do a lot of bar and bat mitzvah. Um, and so who are they surrounded by? A bunch of other Jewish people, same age kids. So it's kind of revolving business. Um, but you gotta keep them all happy. And like I said, part of that is delivering fast. So how, how do I do it? Um, everything has to be fast. I use fast cameras. I, uh, I'll show you the list of the cameras I'm using. I use, uh, ProGrade digital memory cards and readers. And let me just tell you different cards are different speeds and different readers matter as well. So you want to make sure that you're using fast cards and fast readers. I use a really fast computer. Uh, the one I'm on right now is the new uh, MacBook Pro 16 inch um, with the M1 uh, Max chip in it. And it is really fast. Um, I just got done on a photo tour in Costa Rica and one of the people that went was using a, uh, another Mac, but it was an older one. And man, it was killing me how um, slow it was when I was scrolling from one image to another. So having all of this, and I put in here fast brain just because I'm, I am, pretty type A, as you can tell, a little bit ADD, a little ADHD, yeah. Um, but speed, uh, you know, I, I I drink Diet Coke, a little caffeine doesn't hurt either. But I try to just jam as fast as I can. So here's my process, and I'm going to show this to you uh, live here in a minute. Uh, but I just kind of want to go through the list with you. So first thing is I shoot, right? So I'm shooting the images in the camera, I'm shooting to fast memory cards. Um, I then take those cards when I'm done and I, uh, so photo mechanic, which is a software I use calls it ingest. A lot of it, a lot of us just call it downloading. Um, I take those cards, um, and generally I'm shooting with an R3 and an R6 right now, um, soon to be R6 plus or the 62, sorry. And, um, I will take the SD card and the CFAT card and I will pop both of those in to the, uh, ProGrade reader, which actually has both slots, which I love. Um, and so I'm downloading both cards at the same time. Uh, generally, takes a couple of minutes. So then um, the, what I'll do is I'll then look at all those I've downloaded, and then I'll start culling for deletions. Um, and the reason that's in red is because generally that's what I do when I'm shooting you know, any kind of event here at home. I'll go through and get rid of the ones that are either out of focus or maybe not peak of action or whatever it might be, and I'll get rid of them. Um, the reason it's in red is when I do the Olympics, I don't do this uh, step because it takes longer. What I do is I skip that step and I go straight to finding the best images and ranking them. I don't, actually, I should have put rename the images in red. So don't even think I do that. Um, literally, I'm just jamming through trying to find the best images. Um, but typically for an event, I'll call for, for the deletions. So if I'm shooting 3,500 images, I may end up with 2,500 images. I may get rid of 1,000. And the reason is when I'm shooting, let's say a family portrait, let's say it's you know, a family of five, I'm not going to take one picture. I might take five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 images of that family of each grouping, and I'll just take the best one or two and keep them, and I'll get rid of the rest. So again, I'm looking for ones where all the eyes are open, the kids are looking right at me, whatever it might be. Um, so I'll, I'll do that. Once I've pared it down to just the images I want, I'll then rename them. Then I rank them. And there's which ones do I want to show the team, my client, or whoever it might be, or what are my favorites? If it's a, a personal shoot, I'll rank the ones that I want to retouch. Um, if I'm posting to a client, I'll then resize uh, for my gallery. Uh, I'll, I will edit some favorites. Like I said before, I want them to have a couple um, to show them, hey, here's my favorites from your day, or in the case of the Olympic team, I'll give them my top 10. Uh, and, it, and for the Olympics, I'm trying to show, again, as a photographer, what's our job? Tell a story. 
So I, I will find those images to tell a story. If if the goaltender got a shutout, I better have a good shot of that goaltender stopping the ball, the puck, whatever it might be. Uh, if someone got a hat trick, got three or four goals, I better have at least one good shot of that athlete scoring a goal. So I'm looking for the images that either tell the story or that just photographically I really love, whatever it might be. I'll edit some of those. Then again, for the client here, I'll upload those. For Team USA, we have a portal I go to and I just post the images right to their server. Um, for my client, I then upload to Zenfolio, which is the website I, web gallery I use. And then I then share that gallery password protected with my client. And again, my goal is to get that done usually by noon or 1 p.m. the next day. And then my favorite part is that I get to invoice a client uh, because the work is done. And I don't invoice my clients um, until I do all this work. Uh, I'm kind of old school. I like to earn it first and they get paid. Uh, so the client that I shot for this weekend, I probably won't even invoice them for another week because I still have more editing on what I do for them because they're, they're picking images like daily right now. So uh, let me talk a little bit about my camera equipment. Uh, and again, this is my list of what I've got, but this is not something I use every day. I don't take everything that you see here with me. Um, I've got an R3, an R5, and an R6. When I shoot events, I generally use the R3 and the R6. The R5 I generally use for photo tours, like we were just in Vietnam and Cambodia and Costa Rica. I took the R5 for the shots where I want higher resolution. Um, my lenses, my, my favorite lenses are the 70 to 200 to 8. I use that for almost all my portraits. Um, when I'm shooting an event like a wedding or bar mitzvah, my three, the trifecta for me are the 70 to 200 the 2470 and the 15 to 35. Those are the ones I use the most. Um, the other lenses you see there, the long ones like the 100 to 500, the 100 to 400, the 200 to 400, those are used uh, for the Olympics, for wildlife, stuff like that. Um, the fisheye I use you know, for creative shooting. Um, I, I do use it at events because it can be kind of fun. And the macro, you'll see some of the macro stuff I just did. And, and so I use that for uh, a, lot, a lot of times in Costa Rica. The flashes, I've got uh, a can of flash. I do use magma diffusers. I use Tiffin filters, Gitzo tripods. I really like the Acrotech ball head on the on the Gitzo tripod. Um, I use think tank bags. And as I mentioned before, I use ProGrade Digital CF Express and SD cards, uh, depending on which cameras I'm using. Um, and I use all their uh, memory card readers. And I actually have a bunch of them here and I keep two in every camera bag. So. To make sure I've got them ready to go, and I use Black Rapid uh, straps. The software I use, and this tends to be confusing to people because everybody assumes I use Lightroom, and I don't use Lightroom. Um, I use Photo Mechanic and Photoshop. Um, for those who are not uh, familiar with Photo Mechanic, which you'll see in my demo here, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Photo Mechanic is by a company called Camera Bits, and um, they they make this really high speed browsing software that uh, almost every Olympic photographer uses. Um, again, that in combination with all the fast memory cards, readers and computer and everything really uh, cranks up the speed for me. Um, it is really great. It doesn't do all the things that Lightroom does. It, you can't do exposure changes and mass changes across white balance and things. It doesn't do any of that, but it allows me to call at a speed uh, to deliver quickly. And when I deliver images to clients, I should mention this, I deliver everything raw. So their gallery, they're not retouched. <clears throat> I don't do tweaks to the brightness and all that. I just upload them as is. I've, I've been shooting for 20 years. The quality of the images coming out of the camera are good enough. And I just tell my clients, look, when you order an image for an album or for digital or print, every one of those gets retouched. So I'll, I'll do that <clears throat> once they've done their ordering. So I do all my retouching on Photoshop, and I'll show you how I do that. For the hardware, I've got a couple uh, Macs that I use. The Mac Studio, which is my main computer, um, which has the M1 Max processor and 64 gig of RAM. And then the MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Max processor, also 64 gig of RAM. <clears throat> Those are my two machines. So one is my home machine, one is my traveling machine. Um, when I'm home, I use the Apple 35 inch uh, monitor and it's a great monitor. I also have a, a Samsung as well. Um, I just like having a really big size monitor because then I'll, I don't have to zoom in. When I'm on the smaller laptop and I'm trying to look at an image, I may have to zoom in to check the clarity. Whereas if I'm home on my big monitor, I can tell immediately if it's clear or not without having to have that extra step. 
I do use a Wacom tablet. I don't even have a mouse on my computer. I do everything using the Wacom tablet. I like the fact that it's pressure sensitive. Again, saves a little bit of time. We talked about the fact that I use the ProGrade readers, of course. So just to show you a couple images, uh, again, we talked about Olympics. This is one of Michael Phelps from Rio. Uh, and um, I just, you know, again, Olympic stuff. This is a bot mitzvah I just shot. Um, I love the fact that DJ brings this bubble machine. The kids love it. A little $20 thing, and they just love it. But it's fun to shoot. I'll pre-focus on <clears throat> my subject. And then once they're blowing the bubbles, because I'm back button focusing, the camera will then not focus on the bubbles and stay on the kid. Weddings, again, I want to deliver those the next day, just like I do everything else. This is family portraits. Family portraits, if I take the family portrait in the morning or the after, you know late morning, I'll have them delivered within maybe two or three hours after I get home. This is a, uh, on a photo tour. This is a recent shot from Cambodia. This is Angkor Wat uh, at I think about five in the morning at sunrise. Uh, and these I'm ranking for me when I'm getting back to the uh, hotel room, which ones do I want to, you know, retouch for my collection and for me to post on social media. Same thing with this one, just taken in Costa Rica. And this is the Quetzal in uh, the cloud forest. You can see the rain there. Uh, and it had a nut in its mouth. Perfect uh, chance to get a good shot there. And again, I ranked this one for me. I like the fact that I had the bird. I also like the fact that I had the spider web here and everything kind of cool. So I use this for everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump over uh, out of... Uh, uh, PowerPoint, I'm going to take you in here into photo mechanic. So this is photo mechanic. This is the software I use for all of my culling. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the shortcuts uh, that I've done. But first thing I do when I'm in the software is when I put a memory card in, this will pop up. <clears throat> this is the ingest. So if I had a card in here, it would show up here on the left. And then um, I've already told it, okay, I don't want it there. I want it to be in a folder called on my desktop called Costa Rica 2022. And um, so I can either pre-create the folder or I can just create primary destination, new folder and type it in. And then I don't, I don't download to two different folders because again, I want to call through and get rid of the bad ones first, then back up. You can do that. But what I like to do is I like to put in my metadata. So with every image, like right now it says corporate headshots. Well, these are Costa Rica. So I'm gonna go to Costa Rica photo tour. Now this is cool. I've got a, you'll see, this fills in all my information for me. So where I'm shooting, it has my copyright information and everything here. Okay. Now you'll see I've pre-stored all these snapshots. So if I shoot at a certain temple or if I'm doing family portraits, it'll fill all that in for me. And this saves me a lot of time because if I'm shooting a bar mitzvah at PTB, I just click this and it, it fills it in for me. In this case, I'm gonna go back to Costa Rica, and then close that, and I hit ingest. Now, when it brings in the images, it'll bring it in, and every image has my metadata attached to it. Um, this is great because if it does end up on the internet or something, um, someone can't actually look and see my copyright and how to, contact, how to contact me if they want to purchase it. So, all right, so now we have all these images, and um, I want to start culling through them, and I want to you know, get rid of the stuff that we don't want. So I've got all these birds here. I've got, I don't know, let's just search through here. Let's say, I don't know, well, let's, let's try, let's do the monkey that I have here because let's just start here. And I've got all these different shots of these howler monkeys that were in the trees here. And I'm gonna, I'm a, let me start at the beginning here. All right, so this is our first one, right? Let's find the first one. Right here. All right. So this one here, I'm going to zoom in because I'm on my laptop. I can't really tell if that's sharp or not. And I can either hit Z for zoom or I can command click if I want to click up here or here. I can command click wherever I want. This is not tack sharp on the eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit T for tag. And you'll see down here at the bottom, it check marks that. That means it's tagged. So now I'm looking at this one. This one looks eh, it's pretty sharp. Not great. I'm going to tag that one too. And this one, okay. I like the fact that he's got the leaf in his mouth, but there's no catch light in his eyes. Tag, tag, tag. There we go. That's the one I want. And then, uh, so what I'm going to do is normally, I'm going to go at full speed here. Okay, I'll tag. Here, uh, no catch light. Tag, tag. 
that's okay. I'll keep that one, tag that one up because these two are the same. Oh, there's good catch light in the eye. Love that one. Okay, good. Keep those. These two are similar. All right, tag that one. These two are similar. Little leaf blowing at the top. So here the leaf is farther from his head. Here it's closer to head. Uh, let's keep the closer one. Tag that one. Tag that one because those these two are the same. Tag that one. Tag that one. This one, no catch light in the eyes. Look, you can barely see the eyes. Tag, 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 tag. There, I want that one. So what I do is I go through and I just tag those. Now, I can go up and I can say select tagged, which is command T. And you'll see all those ones that I just I want to get rid of are now tagged, okay? Now I can just go up to file and say, delete those that are tagged. Boom. Do you want to get rid of them? Yes. Okay, those are now gone. So now I'm going to make a second pass through the monkeys and say, which one do I like the best? I like that one. It's sharp. Yep, very sharp on the eyes. I like it with the leaf there. So I've color coded this yellow. Now, one is purple, two, three, four, five. I'm going to keep changing the colors here. What I do is I will color code. A four means I like it. A three means I really like it. Two is a money shot, uh, which doesn't happen very often. I'm um, very picky. And one is it's done and edited. So I will now go through and I will rank. Like, oh, uh, kind of like that one. Okay, I'll put a one or a four on that one. Um, this one's okay. I like that one a lot. Let's say I want to uprank that to a three. And you'll see that it's changed to a different color. And now this is similar to Lightroom where you have a star. Uh, we can rank it by star. And you can do that here as well in front of mechanic the, on the... On the side, I can rank this a four star, three star, whatever I want. But I like colors because to me, when I come back out, I can easily see the color way easier than I can star ranking. So I'll go through and again, really fast. I go, oh, I kind of like that one. I rank that one up. Oh, that's pretty funny. Let's see, as a sharp, yes. Can I rank that one up? So I'll go through and say, like, okay, look at, see, really subtle between all these images with the leaves blowing behind them. But let's say I like that one the best. I'll rank that one high. And then maybe on the, on the, I like the hand position, maybe there better than there. So maybe that one. Okay. And then I like that one. We'll rank that one high. So then when I come back out and you'll see this in my images, I've ranked the ones that I like the best. Now, the cool thing is I can actually take this and I can say, now, show me anything that's ranked versus things. And there's, I'm turning off anything that's not ranked by just clicking on this. I can also say, don't show me anything except for you know, uh, just the oranges or, uh, sorry, let me turn that off. So just oranges or just yellows or just reds, which will be none. Um, so I can I can tell the software to filter it for just what I want. So again, when I'm doing the Olympics, all I'm doing is I'm jamming through all 2,700 images and I'm hitting a four or three on my favorite images. And I'm doing this at super fast speeds. Just And the cool thing I should mention about Photo Mechanic is the speed at which I can jam through images, you'll see here, is really, really fast. So I can, um, I can do this really quickly. And again, I've done this for a long time. My eye is trained to look for those key moments and the catch light and the peak of action and all of that. But anyway, I can filter them out. Now, once I've filtered them, so I, you'll see I ranked this one in orange. I did like, I was trying to get uh, these uh, hummingbirds in the rain. I slowed the shutter speed down. And if you look over here on the, the right, you'll see, I was shooting at 200th of a second. Normally when I'm shooting hummingbirds, I want a faster shutter speed, but I wanted the streaks of the rain. And so what I was looking for was, you know, where's a good shot where I've got, you know, rain popping off the head of the hummingbird. And there was one in here right there. I ranked this one high because I like the fact that the raindrops also were popping off the head here. So I ranked that one higher. So, that's why this is an orange versus a yellow. But what I want to do once I've cold them down and I'm down to 45 now that I like is inside of Photo Mechanic, I can, in the preferences, I can set for launching what, what application it will launch when I hit E for edit. So I told it I use Photoshop 2023. 
So if I go to an image, let's say this one here, and I hit E for edit, it automatically brings up camera raw inside of Photoshop. So I can now start retouching. So let me hit auto. First thing I do is I hit auto. Like what is Photoshop thing? Yeah, that's good. I like the fact that it brightened it. It looks a little too yellow to me. I'm gonna pull the white balance back down a little bit. That looks better. And then, you know, I might look and see, see, is there anything else I need to tweak here? No, maybe add a little bit of a vignette if I want to. I can come in here, whoops, I got all this stuff in the way. Let me just move this. Sorry, guys. So I can say, gee, I want to add a little, I hate it when people do that, but just a little vignette, just teeny bit like this, just to draw your eye in a little closer. Maybe that's my image there. And so um, now I have a finished product. I may want to crop it. I don't really do that here, but, and then what I'll do is I will then save this image and I'll save it as edit dash Costa Rica photo tour. And, um, and when I save that, now, what I have, let me go back to Photo Mechanic for a second, is if I'm sorting by file name here, um, oops, let me turn on all my edits. You'll see, because I named them edit dash, all my favorites end up here at the bottom, or if it's uh, depending alphabetical, so it could be at the top. But so here's the one I just edited. I color code it a number one, because ones are done for me. And the great thing about that is I can then say, just show me my edits. So now I go in there, here's that shot I just showed you with the hummingbird with the rain popping off its uh, head and coming off the wings. Um, but these are just my best of the best from the trip, trying to find, like I actually tried motion panning uh, a monkey, never tried that before. But like, you know, so if I look at like these pictures of the frog and I have lots, let me go back for a second. I wanna show you those. So here's our frog. There's a lot of images here. Now, I can, I've got the preview here, and I've got all the information about what I shot and everything else. I can go in there and say, don't show me all that. Just show me the image if I want. And now I can cruise through them here and say, which one do I like the best? So this one here, uh, I like this one. This one here, these are kind of distracting with the bokeh in the background. Um, you know, just slight differences here. Look at this. Between this and this, the frog didn't move much. I moved a little bit in my positioning to get a different background. So I, I'll look through and see which one. Like this one here, the light that was on the leaf was better than this one where someone was holding an LED light, might have been me, to light the frog. But look what it did to the flower. So I actually like this one better than that one. And so these are subtle differences, but I'll find those that I like just by jamming through them. And then I'll do the retouching and I end up with, let's say, that one there. And so this whole process is a matter of, again, training your eye to look for catch light, to look for sharpness, to look at the foreground, the background, your subject, and make those decisions quickly. And when I'm shooting, again, for a client, um, what I want to do is I want to make those decisions fast. If there's a slight difference, like you just saw of the background, um, like this shot here was obvious to me. Like this one was a monkey jumping, very hard to get that shot, especially with a decent background that's not a blue sky. That one was obvious. I knew that when I shot that, that that was going to be one I wanted to keep. But a lot of times I don't know that. So I'm going through here and I'm looking. And if the difference is very subtle, like those leaves that were blowing, I'll just make a quick decision like, okay, I'm going to go with that one. Keep moving. If you sit there and you, you mull over it for 20 minutes, you're just wasting time. And the client, doesn't know that you have two images that are that similar. So just pick your best and move on. Just hit the button and keep going. So that's kind of the process I go through. I, I do it here in Photo Mechanic, jump over to Photoshop. Once I save it, it's in the same folder. I should mention that in, uh, in Photo Mechanic, it's just pointing to a folder. So it's unlike Lightroom, it's not cataloging, although they do have a cataloging feature over here. I really don't use it that often. Um, it's really just pointing to a folder on my desktop called CR2022. And that's what you're seeing here. So that's kind of the process um, in a nutshell, and it keeps me efficient. I'm going to jump back here for a second. Uh, actually, let me just ask, are there any questions here before I jump back to PowerPoint? There are a couple of questions that okay. we can jump into if you'd like, Jeff. Okay, let's do that now, and then I'll go over it. Yep. You bet. You bet. So we'll start off uh, with this one here. Uh, Glenn's asking, 
for sports in particular, do you tend to shoot your sports all in raw? Yeah. So here's a, a water polo game that I shot recently um, for USA water polo. And I do, you'll see, these are all CR three falls. I, here's the thing. Um, I used to say when I shoot the Olympics, this is not Olympics, this is local at Stanford, but when I shoot the Olympics, it's a critical moment in time. I'm lucky to be there. It's uh, it's a point in history. I want to make sure I get the best possible file. And then I came home and I realized, wait a second, everything I shoot is important, right? Whether it's a portrait for a family, an event like a bar mitzvah or a wedding or whatever, those are all key moments of those people's lives. So I shoot everything raw. Um, when I shoot raw, I shoot raw to both cards in my camera. So I shoot redundant to um, both of the uh, program memory cards in the camera, just to make sure that I've got them. And um, I don't do raw to one, JPEG to one, because it slows your camera way down. Because as a process for raw, write it, and then process for JPEG and write it. So I do raw to both. And I always do full size raw images because um, I want the best quality image I can get for my client and, and honestly for me. Okay. And then if you could just clarify, did you say for your very first culling, of deletions are done after uploading to Photo Mechanic? Yes. So I will do the ingest first. Once those are ingested and then they come into this folder, let me just go back to everything here. So you have all your images. Yes, the first pass is going to be, again, going through here. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, this one or this one, that one or that one, uh, this head position. Okay, that one or that one. Gee, I think I like that one better. Okay, I'll tag this one. And then I'm just like this one here. Very subtle difference between, sorry, between this one and this one. Very subtle. Maybe that one. Okay, moving on. And so that pass is going through and just tagging the ones all the way through. So in the example of this weekend, I shot, like I said, 4,500 images or 55 or whatever it was. Um, I was actually jamming through each. So Friday night, I did their dinner. When I got home Friday back to the hotel um, at 10 p.m., I culled through those images, deleted the ones I didn't like or, or redundant, and then I renamed. Oh, I didn't show you my renaming. Oops. I missed a step. Sorry, guys. So I culled through. Then I rename. So what I do is I select all and I go to rename. And so uh, here for Costa Rica, it would be, you know, whatever it might be, headshots or whatever. But I have pre-stored in um, of things like I don't know, whatever it might be. So I can come in here and say um, Costa Rica, Costa, and I never use spaces, by the way. It's Costa dash Rica dash 2022 dash. And then I want it numerically. So I want it 0001 to whatever. So if I hit rename now, I don't want to do that. But if I do, it'll rename. Oh, what the heck? I'll just do it there. I just renamed all the images. It's that fast. So I will then rename all the images. I ranked all the images Friday night so that it saved me time on Sunday because I did the Friday. Same thing Saturday. I shot with a family from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. I got home. I started going through images. I actually did my Olympic workflow that night. I didn't want to delete all the images because I knew it would take me hours. So instead, what I did is I went and I just found the great ones. They actually had a rock star, uh, pop star show up at their mitzvah. And I wanted to get a couple of images of that pop star with the kid. So I just looked for those images, retouched them, resized them, got them back to the family by, I think it was around 11.30 PM or maybe midnight that I got them to them. So the workflow changes slightly depending on what I'm shooting, but uh, again, it's all geared to speed. Great. I, I think we can, we can either, <laughs> we can either move on Jeff or we can keep asking questions up to you. You tell me. Um, are there more questions? There, there was one more question that came sure, in. If you want yeah, to take That's this fine. first, Mike uh, from Vimeo asked, uh, "How do you catalog your photos to go back months or years later? Do you use something like Lightroom, or are you just sticking with Photo Mechanics?" No, I do everything. I don't use Lightroom. I use Photo Mechanic. But here's the thing: my folder structure is, um, and and it's probably not going to. Uh, I'm on my laptop right now because the screen is so big on my other computer that. Um, uh, it's it'd be too daunting, but you can get an idea here. So here's a bunch of things that um, that are on my computer. So date dash what it was. So year, month, day dash the subject matter. 
And so um, this this actually works great because I can scroll through and find whatever I want. And on my uh, drive here, I have literally every photo I've ever taken in my life this way. So I can do a search and say, find me, you know, a mitzvah, whatever it might be. And it's going to show me every all the mitzvahs that are on this computer. And so I can just go say, okay, I want Olivia. Boom. And so I can find any image, like almost instantly, just by um, you know, doing a search for the name. Uh, I, I think in the past when people say, you know, I, I've had situations where someone will say, seven years ago, you shot for us. Uh, the grandfather passed away, but you got a great image of him. Can we have that? I'm like, absolutely. And I don't charge for those. Um, I can go back and find that image probably within three, four minutes that's, without cataloging. That's just having impressive. a good, um, you know, process. And and the the naming structure. When I did this presentation years and years ago, I said, you know, file name should be USA water water polo underscore men underscore versus Italy or whatever. And now I use dashes because the internet um, doesn't like underscores. So I use dash for everything and I don't use spaces because again, the internet doesn't, some things don't like spaces. So I, I use dashes for everything. All right. Perfect. All right, just to, I'm, I'm a, I'll, uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep moving. And then I will, um, I'll come back and um, answer any questions people have. Also, oh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, how to get a hold of me. But so some tips, you'll see that I created some shortcuts in photo mechanic. So from the metadata, um, and I have shortcuts for, uh, let me go back for a second. I'll show you some of my shortcuts. In uh, in here, if I want to take all these, let's go back to my Costa Rica images. Let's say I want to go to all my finished images here. I want to take these, I want to save them as JPEGs or small JPEGs. If I hit save, I've got a whole bunch of predetermined sizes. Like here's 25% with no watermark. Here's 50% with a watermark. And all this can be done in photo mechanic. So I've got stuff in here, like, you know, whatever I need, like digital negatives for client, which is, I believe, 18 or 2000 pixels compressed a little bit, whatever it might be. So I, if a client says, I want all these at 25% with no watermark, I say, fine, here they come. I hit one. This is already predefined. And it's now just created a whole, whole folder. These are now all at 25% without my watermark. So for my gallery, when I when I submit to the client all their images, let's pretend this is our bar mitzvah. I take all the images, I say save, and I want these to be small because these are going to, to the gallery. So I go gallery proofs, no watermark, save. And this now compresses them way down. These are probably 100K per file. And um, then when I take this folder of images, that's right there. Um, so here, I'll show you the, the uh, in the finder. Look, these are 100K. It was that fast to resize all of these. So I've pre-written all these scripts to save me time. And then when I'm in Photoshop, you'll see I've even pre-written scripts to resize or uh, you know whatever it might be. I've even got some scripts in here for whitening teeth or whatever. So it's great to have all this pre-done so it saves me time. Again, I'm trying to save time every possible way I can here. So I pre uh, at the Olympics, if I know I'm shooting for USA water polo, let's say today it's going to be men versus Croatia, I'll create a folder, already name that, and I already have the file name structure pre-ready to go, so I don't have to type in anything. Literally typing stuff takes time, so I try to pre-define all that in advance. Uh, I just showed you the Photoshop actions that I have. That also helps me save time. So everything is geared toward time. So for Team USA, they want me to deliver images. They don't want them full res. They want them smaller, at least initially. I give them full res later. So I pre-written a script that takes photo mechanics as resize them down to 900 pixels or 1800 pixels, whatever the team wants, without a watermark, and a predefined to drop into a Dropbox folder so that they can grab them or to their server. Um, just this is my, my shameless plug for photo tours. Um, just got back from a bunch, but we've got a bunch more coming up. So we got Tanzania coming up um, in February of 2023. And we do have four spots left for that. Then we have Japan, New Zealand, Croatia, Slovenia, Costa Rica, Morocco, San Francisco. 
and we're about to add some more. So um, if you're interested in any of those, uh, please email me. And here's how you get a hold of me. It's uh, jeffcable.com is my website, uh, my blog, which I didn't even talk about, uh, blog.jeffcable.com. And I do blog just about every week. Um, from the Olympics, I blog every day. And so in the blog, I talk about you know my favorite photos, how I shot them, you know, why I picked that image, whatever it might be. Um, so you can get a hold of me at Jeff at jeffcable.com. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram is all Jeff Cable Photography. Twitter is jcable12, just because 12 is my favorite number. Um, and uh, I will take questions, but again, I want to thank ProGrade Digital again, not only for great products that they make, um, but also for sponsoring this, because without them, you know, you wouldn't be seeing this. So I appreciate them. I'm going to end my share here and uh, and take any questions that people might have. So fire away. Fire away. Rapid fire. Ready? Go. Yeah. No. <laughs> the presentation was even high speed. Yeah, it really was. I, you know, when we, when we initially spoke, you, you thought you were going to be here for hours on end. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark, Mark on Facebook wanted to know uh, what gallery system do you use? So again, um, because I, so photo mechanic is just pointing to a folder. So I, oh, oh, sorry. They're talking about gallery for posting to the client. Um, got that. Um, I actually use Zenfolio. Um, I use Zenfolio uh, for everything. So for my website is Zenfolio, as well as my web galleries. And um, the great thing is in Zenfolio, when I'm ready to post their gallery, like I did, um, was it yesterday? God, the days are just jamming through him. Um, two days ago for my client, it actually has a an area on the web page where it's just a drop folder, basically. So I can take my photo mechanic images, select all, and just drag them right over to the drop folder on the browser. And uh, it takes minutes. It's great. Awesome. So I want to. And I also, I should you... also mention. Sorry, uh, but should also mention they make it very easy for my clients to order images, digitals, and prints. Um, if you'll notice, I've got a very large printer behind me. I can do all my own printing here and do a lot of that. I've got a Pro One Thousand on this side and the Pro Forty One Hundred there. Uh, so um, they make it easy for for people to order, and you know that's money, right? I mean. Uh, it's great to be able to find those images quickly, print them image quickly and get them out of here. Definitely. That's, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what most of us are in the business for, right? Making money. Right. I mean, you know, it's interesting because taking people think that, you know, being successful at photography is taking a great photo and clearly you have to take good photos, but it really is how you run your business and how efficiently you run it is to determine whether or not you'd be successful or not. And I know great photographers who take a picture that is just phenomenal, but if you don't understand how to then market that, sell that or whatever, then then you're, you're going to fail. I don't know, Jeff. I think you gave me a new, a new business venture idea. I think I'm going to market myself as just the worst photographer ever and see see what I get. Maybe I'll pick up some jobs. You have a lot of competition. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's something I've talked about in the past where, you know, it, it, and we all have to start somewhere and we all, you know, but um, I do see people who watermark their images, you know, John Doe or Jane Doe photography, and they're not ready yet. And I always tell people, look, get to the point where you can do a decent job at it and then call yourself a business. You know, I play ice hockey and I was told way on early. I, I started at 37 years old and I was told, don't go out there with a hockey stick, go and learn how to skate first so you'll get some respect when you finally get a stick in your hand. And so I think the same thing is true in photography. Like learn to skate, learn to shoot first, then call yourself a business, right? I like that. I like that. I think that's great advice. Um, now, Glenn's asking, after uploading to Zenfolio, do you send a link of that gallery to the client? I do. So when I um, actually, Zenfolio has it, uh, again, I've pre-written uh, um, communication in uh, Zenfolio. So I have one that says like, congratulations on your bar and bat mitzvah. Uh, you know, loved shooting for you. Uh, I've posted 700 images for you. And I change that number depending on how many I've posted. Um, here's your password. I do password protect them. Uh, and then I give them all the instructions. Like, here's what you do. You know, oh, and I encourage them share this with all your friends. I know other people want to see the images from your event. Please share this gal uh, gallery with all your friends and family. Of course, that's great because then that means I have that many more people that may want to order images from me. So again, revenue in. Um, so I do that through Zenfolio. But yes, I will. Uh, generally, what I'll do is when I shoot something like a bar mitzvah, typical bar mitzvah day is uh, I'll do portraits before the service. 
just like a wedding. I'll do portraits, the service, maybe a luncheon, and then the reception or the party. So I will split those into folders. So I have a folder called before the service, the service, the party, and then photographer retouched. Because I want to give them, give them some samples of what I can do to take an image and make it better. And so those are the standard folder structure. So I will drag the appropriate images into each folder. When I'm done with that, then I go in, I, I, I create a custom URL. So it's not some weird number. It'll say, you know, Max Steinberg Bar Mitzvah dot com you know jeffcable.com slash max steinberg bar mitzvah and then um the password I, I try to be creative with the passwords so the one i just shot this weekend was the last of 12 kids in this grouping of families so it was you know best for last was the password and i try to have fun with it like if the kid did something funny uh during this you know i'll try to think of something funny to match that for the password so i try to be creative there put the password in email it to the client. And then once I email the client, now I just sit and wait for them to then order. And then I invoice them the next day. I like to wait a little bit before invoicing because I don't want my client to think it's all about the money because it's not all about the money. It's about capturing family history for them, but still have to get paid. But I don't want to be like, okay, now give me my money. You know, <laughs> I don't want to look like that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, Shelly wants to know, in terms of those images that you deliver, do you set limits on the number of images that you deliver per event? Do you have a minimum or maximum to stay on top of your deadlines, especially when you have about four to six events in the course of two days with limited time to edit? No, I mean, I. so here's the thing. I don't limit myself because I'm limited by what I, what I photographed. If I, so some events... I might have 600 images, which I ranked some events. I may have, if it's a shorter event or, you know, sometimes if I'm, if I'm photographing, let's take a bar mitzvah again. If the kid's looking down the whole time and not looking up, I'm, you know, and that happens, right? You have the deer in the headlights. So the kid's scared to death. I, I may only have 400 good images to show them. And inversely, I may have an event where, you know, just amazing things happen and, 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 or like this weekend where it was a three day deal and, you know, not that, but, you know, we did a lot more portraits than usual. And then we had this pop star show up. Well, I, I shot the crap out of that. Right. Cause I mean, I, the pop star only performed for half an hour. So I just, you know, machine gunned it right to get a lot of good shots. So I, I think I posted 1300 from theirs. So Typically, yes, you you want to have some limits because you don't want to overload your client. But to me, I'd rather overload the client with good images than have them come back to me and go like, uh, we couldn't find a favorite. Like that's my worst nightmare. So again, it's it's really determined by what I captured, not any hard number either direction. Awesome. Now, uh, Cecil wants to know, and I think this is a great question. How do you not become emotionally attached to your photos when you're editing? Because Cecil in particular agonizes over which ones to get rid of. I do. No, I absolutely get emotionally attached. I mean, sometimes almost too much. Like I, I'll, I'll say to the family, like, oh my God, look at the lighting on this. It, oh, it's so perfect. And then they'll be like, yeah, but it does, I don't like the, the way I look in it. And I'm like, no, it's like so good. Um, so I do get emotionally attached absolutely to them. Um, matter of fact, for the family that I just shot for this weekend, I already delivered 45 images that they wanted right away. Then last night at 11 o'clock at night, <clears throat> I was looking at the images and I thought, oh, I got some really cool shots of that pop star. And I know her manager wanted some. So I went through and added another 25 just for me because I was emotionally attached to them. I'm like, oh, this is a cool one. Oh, I like the way she's holding the microphone in this or whatever. And so <clears throat> I do get emotionally attached, but I think that's important because as photographers, we want to, I mean, I think it, the minute you, you become detached from them, quit the business, right? I mean, we, we need to be invested in what we're doing as we're creating art. Now, with that said, um, I think, you know, going back to the question of when you get emotionally attached to two images or three or four, if I'm so emotionally attached to one or two that I can't decide, I'll post both, just default to both. And so um, I let the emotions go, you know, better to post too much than too little. But don't agonize because that just wastes time. Give them both. And I do that quite a bit. You know, in the example of the hummingbird shots he saw, if the two are very similar and it was going to a client, give them both. 
you know, I mean, let them have the chance, the choice. Of, but again, they're not going to see both. They don't even know the two exist. Make a decision and go. You just don't agonize on it. That 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 costs way too much time. Now here's here's a question. You and I you and I spoke yesterday, and this was this was something we discussed. So this might this might be a sore point or not. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Mike, Mike wanted to know. He said you said every photograph you've ever taken is available to you right now. How's that possible? What drive system are you using? Desktop, NAS. Thank you so much for sharing oh your knowledge. Oh yeah. There you go. Okay. I hit the nerve. I hit the nerve. Right. Hit the nerve. <laughs> so right now I am using Drobo um, and I have uh, here, uh, I can show it. I'll flip my computer around. I have here a, you see it. I'm, let me see, do this. I've got um, a large eight bay system here. This is a direct attached system. Over there is a, another Drobo that is a uh, network attached system. Um, and I've got like 60 terabytes per device. Um, the challenge I have right now is Drobo, the future of Drobo is uncertain. Um, you know, and so they're in chapter 11 right now. And um, that's critical to me because I mean, the data is everything, right? So I am looking right now, and you and I talked about this yesterday, I am investigating other solutions that will allow me to have a large capacity like that. I prefer having one direct attached system that I work off of like the one I've got here and literally have every image from 1995 on, on that system. And then the NAS drive that's over here, what I do, and I should mention this in my workflow, and I didn't apologize, I should have talked about backing up because it's critical. Once I go through and I call, I rename, I rank, I edit my tip, my favorites for the client, and I then upload them and I give it to them. The last thing I do is I take those images, that whole folder, I move it from this drive to my NAS drive. So it's now in two different places. And every night at 1 a.m., I guess it'd be every morning at 1 a.m., that drive synchronizes to another one I have uh, 250 miles from here at my brother's house. So that data is now in three places and one remote place. So not only do I have every image I've ever shot here, I have every image I've ever taken in my life there. So I live in earthquake country. Um, and also, you know, California, you know about the wildfires that we've had. I used to have uh, the remote drive about a mile from here. And then when the Sonoma fires happened and it wiped out the whole town, I thought that's just too close. So I moved the other box farther away, but it is synchronizing. And, and I'm pretty anal about getting those over as soon as I'm done culling, get them onto the backup drive. So in the middle of the night, they're synchronized to my brother's place. So God forbid if I have a fire or something here, I've got those images for my client and me personally everywhere. Great. And we did get Thomas. Thomas did throw out a solution for you or a suggestion at least uh, is to look in to Chuenas Core. I might be pronouncing that wrong. I do me a favor and email me that. I would love to. If anybody has suggestions of a really large direct attached drive, I want to know. <laughs> so yeah, please let me know. I'm, I'm email investigating Jeff. now. Yeah, seriously. There you go. Now Elizabeth you'll get a free Jeff to... Cable photography hat. Oh wow! There you go. Look at that. If you if you get the winning suggestion. Oh, oh, you gotta have the winning. I can't give it. I was just gonna spam you. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth asked, uh, "Do you have some sort of protection on the pictures so that the viewers can't print them themselves?" Yeah. So um, when I showed you how I resize those way down before I post the gallery, um, those are resized down to like I think nine hundred pixels or maybe eleven hundred pixels. Um, and heavy compression. So remember the file size you saw was about 100K. You're not gonna be able to print very well on a 100K file. Um, also, when I put upload them to the gallery, to uh, Zenfolio, they are watermarked. So, uh, and right across, now it's light, but it's there. So it's really not a usable file at all. And you'll notice on the blog, whenever I post, I watermark in the corner. I don't wanna make it like two in your face but at least it's enough there to say, hey, I own these. Um, and even the ones on the blog are only 900 pixels. So um, yeah, I don't want people taking them and enlarging them to the sizes I can do back here. I mean, that would be a problem. So yes, definitely want to resize them. Definitely want to watermark them. Um, and I tell the clients, you know, when you, when you order it, they'll come full resolution without a watermark and they'll be finished. And when I retouch, you know, it's exit signs out of the background, 
uh, if they have acne or flyaway hairs and stuff like that, I take all, I, I do a full retouch on every image. Olympics, we're not allowed to do that. We can't clone. We can't do all that. It's, for the Olympics, we're only allowed to do exposure changes, shadows and highlights, white balance and crop, basically. Now, Larry wanted to know in terms of importing, actually in terms of exporting your images, do you sharpen your images before you export to your JPEGs? I don't. I don't. Um, when I do a final retouch, when I'm doing the retouch for my client or myself, I might pull up the sharpness. Um, and I will selectively uh, sharpen as well. So one of the things that I'll do is um, on the eyes um, uh, of the animal or the, you know, if it's wildlife, I may actually selectively sharpen just to pop them a little bit. Um, but so I might do a little selective sharpening, but generally I don't. And it's interesting because as photographers, we're really picky about that. But, you know, when it comes to the client, you know, they don't even know. Like sometimes you're off. If I'm off by even a little bit, if, 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 if I've got like this part in focus instead of the eye, I'm upset. Like, ah, client doesn't care. They just want, oh, look how cute Jane looks. She looks so cute, adorable right there, right? Or Max um, Steinberg. <laughs> yeah, Max Steinberg. So, we, so you know, Max has got to look good. Um, we want it to be tack sharp. They want to show the emotion or, you know, the story. And so we obsess over digital noise. Um, you know, I was talking to Scott Kelby about this. You know, I've only had one client in 20 years that he said, say to me, that looks a little noisy, you know, to me, you know, noise is in bar mitzvahs is the grandparents going like this, this band's too loud. That's noise, right? <laughs> Yeah. Great. So I want to hit you with one last question. This is this is a pro grade event. And and so I think it begs the question because I think that there's a lot of people out there who may not understand this. So I think it's just great to put out there informational wise. And you've got the expertise, you've got the experience. There's so many different memory card brands out there. There's so many ways that you can store your stuff. You know, a, a, a little sales pitchy here, but why why prograde what are what are they doing with their cards that differentiates them and makes them stand out from other competitors no it's a great question i mean it's a good point and and here's the thing i mean i want it for speed i want it to, for rely reliability is the most important thing so i've got like stacks i've got readers here i've got cards everywhere here um and like i need to know that when my images are taken that they're that i'm getting them back and um being in the in the memory card industry for as long as I was, I know the difference of quality flash memory and quality controllers and all the innards. People see these things and they oh, it's a piece of plastic. No, underneath the plastic is some pretty intricate technology. And so I want the highest quality so I know my images will come back. That's number one. And almost, I mean, that's so far above everything, right? But the second thing is. I want to know that they're fast and I want to know that I can, you know, get, because I have such a tight schedule, I want to be able to download. I don't want to wait 30 minutes to download. I want to be able to download in 30 seconds or a minute. And so, you know, it's funny when we talk about speed, how if I'm photographing a, uh, an event here locally, sure, I can set it to download. I'll go to the kitchen, I'll get a Diet Coke or, you know, little, you know, nosh and I'll come back here and then I'll look at my images. When I'm, you know, when I'm on photo tour and we've been going since six in the morning and it's now nine o'clock at night, I'm downloading because I want to get go through my images quickly because I'm tired and I want to go to bed. And at the Olympics, I'm doing it because I'm contractually bound to do it. So this, right, so speed is important, but again, reliability is still number one. Um, I do love little things like the readers um, all have magnets in them, so literally I can snap this on um, here. I'll show you. I'm just grab another laptop. So this is uh, one I took to the Tokyo Olympics and it's got two of the prograde uh, plates on it. So I can snap on the reader. So what I do is I have two of these, I have one here and I have one here and connected through uh, USB-C. And then I can actually be now uh, downloading up to four cards at a time. And so I, I, I love that they're magnetically can be placed on. I mean, it's so it's simple, but it's cool. You know, there's nothing worse than have the dang thing dangling off your laptop while you're trying to work. So um, they've thought about all the details and they have uh, software like Refresh Pro where I can actually put my memory cards into the reader and I can refresh them. So it cleans them out 
and gets rid of extraneous stuff. Because what people don't understand is when you format a memory card, it doesn't actually erase the images. It just erases the fat table, the table of contents. The pages of the book are still there. So if you use Refresh Pro, you can actually refresh the card back to factory. And I do that. My entire collection of cards, which are sitting here behind the computer, um, I've got like stacks of them. And every like two or three months, I will refresh those cards. Um, the fact that they make that software is, is cool and different. So that's that. That's why I use the product. Awesome. That's why I asked. See, I knew I knew you'd have. I know, a, and that's a great question, and I'm glad you did. Yeah, last one for the day, and then I'll let you go so you can you can get some sleep because Jeff's Jeff's lacking sleep. He's been like in and out and in and out. He just needs a nap. The guy needs a little bit of a break. He came right to B like and H. <laughs> uh tom has asked do you know if prograde ever released a cf card um hasn't looked recently still got an older camera yeah no they didn't um by the time uh prograde was started um compact flash was already pretty much toward the end of its life and i talked to them about it and they did do a compact flash reader um which i encouraged them to do uh and, the, and i actually have one of those um it's probably in my stack here uh but they did they did do a reader um they didn't do the card because honestly and i get it from a business perspective it was it, you know it was, it was like making leaded gas for a car today when they don't need it um i understand there's still a need so then you know then you have to go with another brand but for any of the newer stuff with cf express cfast sd whatever um that's, you know, and, and I, it's funny, I still carry old CF cards with me, just in case when I'm on photo tour, one of my guests shoots CF and needs them. Um, it's the only reason I have them in my bag. But from a business perspective, I understand why they don't do it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Jeff, I want to thank you for being here again. It's been a while since we saw you. And like, like I said, I know you, you've been busy. You've been traveling the world while I'm just sitting here in my, I don't even know what room this is. It's a room in my house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we really appreciate it. Uh, definitely want to say thank you to our hosts over at ProGrade for setting this up with Jeff. Uh, always great to be able to get together with him and have some great knowledge. So thank you to them as well. And of course, everybody at home, you asked some great questions. Hopefully they got answered and to your liking. If you've got suggestions for storage solutions, Jeff is all ears. He's he's even thrown it out there. He'll give you a Jeff Cable photo hat if he picks your solution storage. So I say, I say be in it to win it, right? <laughs> and also, again, if anybody has any additional questions, I know we went pretty quickly here. If anybody has any questions, feel free to email. I do answer every email. So um, quickly. But I do <laughs> <laughs> definitely. And if you haven't, I, I recommend checking out the blog. I read Jeff's blog. I, I find it. I find it enjoyable. If you've, if you've ever enjoyed any of these events, his blog is just as fun and enjoyable. Well, that's what I'll be doing as soon as we're done here is writing the next one. So <laughs> awesome. Can't wait. So thank you to everybody for tuning in. That's all the time we have for today. This has been another edition of the BH virtual event space. We'll catch you next time.